Okay, this is about how pitot tubes work. And in our little drawing, we have here the surface of, um, let's say we have water. And let's say this water is flowing in this direction. So let's go ahead and put a little arrow to indicate that this water has some sort of velocity. And we have a device to measure the velocity, and that's called a pitot tube. And it's essentially a tube that just has a tiny orifice at the end, and it uh, sticks, in this case, we're going to stick it above, open to the atmosphere, um, above the surface. And what happens in this tube is the water enters the tube, and basically the velocity stops. So the, vo the velocity is zero inside this tube, and the water will flow up, fill the tube, and it will actually push above the t surface of the, the water, the adjacent water, and the height of that increase in water is equal to the velocity here, this velocity, squared over 2 times gravity. Okay, well, that's not very good. Uh, let me see if I can rewrite that. The height there is equal to the V squared over 2 times gravity. Now, the pressure at this depth here, PS, as a, indicating static pressure, can be found just like you'd normally find uh, static pressure. You would just take the, the depth of the um, water that you're analyzing, let, let's say um, some sort of HS here, and you calculate the, the static pressure equal to rho of the water times G times HS. Now, I want you to notice that this is, in fact, a... Um, a gauge pressure. This is a gauge pressure. Because we know that there is already the atmospheric pressure pushing down on the surface of the water. And so that this PS is in fact this value plus the atmospheric pressure. But we often just consider, okay, we're just looking at this number right here. So this is a gauge pressure. So what do we have inside here? Well, the pressure inside here, let's call that P naught, inside this tube is equal to um, P naught is equal to the hydrost hydrostatic pressure plus the dynamic pressure, which is rho v squared over 2. And if we were to do a Bernoulli equation for this situation, um, looking at going from here to into the tube, we'd see that P static plus rho over 2 v squared. Now the, the height from, uh, if we're look, going across here, is not changing, so we're going to let the z terms drop out of this equation. Equals p naught plus, uh, we know the velocity inside here is 0, so there's going to be no term there, but I'm just going to write it, plus rho over 2 v naught squared, and we know this term is zero. So here we know that PS minus P naught, um, oops, this is not the best way to do it, let me rewrite it here, solving for, for the velocity, V squared is equal to 2 over rho P naught minus PS. Well, you'll see that in this equation that P naught is equal to PS plus this term. So this term just ends up being 2 over rho times rho V squared over 2. Or, if we drop these out, V squared equals V squared 
it's a trivial answer, but I just wanted to show you that um, um, these relationships hold if you're using the Bernoulli equation as well.